Hey guys, it's your girl Carrie, and welcome back to my channel. This video is a bit of a double duty video today because we are going to be testing out Vivid Glamco's dip liquids, but at the same time, I figured we would go through the entire extra 80s collection, take a look at all the swatches, and then we'll try out these dip liquids and see what we think. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, then stick around, we're getting into it. Now, if you've been around this channel for a minute, then I have made it no secret that I am a Vivid Glamco fangirl. Like, I just love everything about her branding. I love the packaging. I love the care she takes with her customers. I love all the unique powders. Just totally crazy about the brand. But having said that, I actually have never tried her dip liquids, and that's kind of crazy because she was one of the first brands that I purchased from, I believe the second or third, the very beginning of my dip powder journey, but I just never got around to trying her dip liquids, so I figured it was about time we rectified that. So I do have a few friends that have used her liquids for quite some time now and I've really enjoyed them. So, you know, these are people that I trust in the nail community. So I figured, well, if they like them, then I might like them too. So I'm going to give them a go. So what I have here is her three liquid set and it comes in the package like this. And you can see it's in her standard Vivid Glam Co. packaging, which I just love. These reusable bags. And then there's also some bubble wrap inside to kind of protect everything. So let's open up this package and check it out. So everything came pretty securely wrapped and I like the addition of the bubble wrap for the liquids just to make sure nothing breaks in transit. And as we open this up, you can see the first thing I pull out here is actually the dip liquids instruction card. Now, I absolutely love this because her bottles, just like most small business bottles, do not include the instructions on the bottle, which I totally understand. But then typically you have to go onto their website and kind of hunt down for the instructions, and I just really don't have to do all that, to be honest with you. So I just think this is super handy to include these very detailed instructions in with the liquid so you don't have to go hunt them down. Love that. So taking a look at the liquids themselves, like I said, there are three liquids in this set, and so what we have is the glue, the activator, and the gloss. So the glue is what you're going to see usually called bond, and then your gloss is going to be what you typically see called top coat. So you're getting pretty much the same amount of product that you get in similar products from small brands. And actually these are tiny bit cheaper than your usual brand because usually you see $10 per liquid or $30 for a set of three, and this is $27, so not too shabby. So as you can see, we've got our typical branding on here and a classy looking white bottle. All right, so really quickly, I'm just going to open up the actual glue, which is going to be the bond. And just so you can see on the back, there's no instructions. There's just some warnings on there. But again, that's why it's so great that she included it on the card. But I just wanted to open this up just so you could kind of see the consistency of the base and see the size of the brush. So, you know, not too big a brush, not too small. And looking at it in the jar, it looks pretty darn thin. So I'm very excited to see how these go. All right, so I know we just spent a lot of time looking at the liquids and checking out the brushes and all that good stuff, but I have to show you this amazing collection first before we get into the actual application. So this is the Extra 80s collection. It's a play on words. It's EGG Extra 80s, which is perfect for the spring and for Easter. And this is 11 powders in total in this collection, and there are some solids and some glitters, and there's a really cool topper. So I know the focus on the video is the liquids, so we're gonna go through these pretty fast, but I couldn't not show these to you because just as per usual, these powders are gorgeous. All right, so the first one we have here is called As If, and this is a gorgeous mid-tone pink, a little on the brighter side, which I love, with a hint of shimmer in it. The next one we have is called Clutch, and this is a light peachy orange, and as you can see, I'm going in order the color of the rainbow, because that's just seemed natural to me. The next one we have here rhymes with kitchen, which again, I'm trying to practice for when I get monetized, so I'm not going to say the word, but it's a cute word and perfect for an 80s collection. But this is kind of a, it's a yellow, but it has a hint of uh, lime green to it too, so it's a really cool looking yellow green. Next one we have here is called Totally Rad, and this is a muted lime green. Next we have Gnarly, which is a pretty pastel teal color. Next 
Next we have Tubular, which is a light robin's egg blue. And the more I look at these names, the more I feel like I'm doing this wrong. I feel like I should be reading these like 80s style, you know what I mean? Like Tubular. And the last shimmery solid we have here is Wannabe, which is a lighter, maybe mid-tone purple with the hint of shimmer again. Okay, before we get into the glitters in this collection, I wanted to show you this cool topper. And this is called Feeling Extra, and I know it does not look very cute in the jar, but it looks really cute on. So let me show you the swatch stick and talk you through this one. So basically this is a clear base with black flakes in it. And so the idea here is that you will use it over top or over any color to kind of give it that robin's egg look. Now apologies for my really bad swatch here because this is way too heavy a look because this is kind of like robin's egg on steroids. <laughs> but you would obviously use a little bit lighter hand with your topper. But let me show you for example over this green called Totally Rad. It, it just really looks cool, I think, and something that I could definitely see myself using year-round, not just for speckled egg looks, but for that 80s look, or maybe even during Halloween, this would be really cool, too. So I think it's definitely something that will have a lot of great use. So moving to glitters, the first one we have here is called Airhead, and this is such a cool multicolored glitter. And I made a big mess with the glitter. Whoops, sorry. <laughs> but it has kind of a silvery shimmery base. And then it's got these large and medium size and small size different colored pieces, which makes such a cool look. And then YouTuber fail. I got so distracted with, with cleaning up with my little table vacuum again that I forgot to show you the dang swatch. But hold on, I'll have an outdoor one for you. Next we have Stop and Stare, and Logan did a stunning one color Manny with this color. And that's a brand owner, by the way, if you didn't know. But she did a great one color Manny with this, and I can see why. It's just so beautiful. It's kind of a snowy white, but also silver holographic. And there's some kind of black flakes in there too. It's just such a unique powder. And last but not least, we have Bodacious. And what a fun glitter is this, and not, like nothing I've ever seen. It's all multicolored um, glitters that are more like a, like a matte glitter, but they match the other tones in the solids. And then it's got a gold flake in there and black glitters, just so much fun. So just take a look at these swatches outdoors. Aren't they just gorgeous? And I did want to point out that these shimmers are so light and shimmer that they really come off more as solids, which I think makes them more versatile, but I just think it's something to be aware of because they may look a little shimmery in the jar, but they're, they're more solid once you swatch them out. All right, so before we get into the Manny, just a quick update on these. I'm on week four of these jelly tips and they're getting to the point where they're growing up quite a bit that I'm gonna need to replace them soon, but I wanted to kind of just give them a bit more time just to see how far I could get with them before I needed to replace them. So, so far again, no lifting. Everything's going beautifully with these. I'm really happy with them. All right, so before I show you what colors I chose out for the Manny, I did want to show you this card again because I started to read through it and this directions card is like chef's kiss it is so thorough and so detailed and so specific i feel like if you completely were a clueless when it came to dip powder application really everything you need is on here and it's you know it's not just for how to apply the liquids but also like how to prep and you know other things like that i just think this is such a great addition to this tip liquid package I didn't see anything in the instructions that was kind of out of the ordinary for me. I mean, everything looked pretty standard as far as dip liquid application goes, except for something right before the top coat that I had never seen before. We'll get to that when we get to that step. Okay, so guys, I had to use Bodacious. It was 100% the number one powder in this collection that caught my eye. I just think it is so unique and so stunning. So I picked out a couple of the solids that I thought looked really pretty with it and gave a nice contrast. So I've got here Bodacious for the glitter and then I'm gonna use Tubular and Wannabe for my solids. This seemed like the perfect time to pull out my dual ended Vivid Glam Coat tool here. And I love it because I've got both the uh, cuticle tool and then also the wax tool, which I'll be using later. So I'm just gonna kind of talk you through this as I start to apply it. The first thing I want to mention as far as the odor goes is that these are not odorless. They are low odor, but there definitely is a detectable odor there. It was nothing super offensive and pretty standard for most dip liquids, I would say. The base coat is very thin and in a good way. So actually to, to compare it, I would say it's maybe a hair thicker than Virgo and Gem, but maybe a little bit thinner than Ritzy, kind of between the two. And not to pit them against those companies, just those are some that, some liquids that I have a lot of experience with. So I would kind of put it as far as thickness goes between those two. 
Having said that, this is one of the easiest base coats I have ever used. And the reason I say that is because, and you'll be able to see this better on the second coat, I think, but it was super easy to control. And for, for being thin, a lot of times thin liquids will kind of run into your cuticles as you apply it. This did not do that at all. It really stayed right where I put it. It was beautiful. And you can see too, as I dip it in the powder here, there was no issues with it kind of buckling. And I'm not always the neatest when it comes to dipping. I just kind of throw my finger in there and whatever angle I feel like. A lot of times it ends up being more of like a laying flat into it than putting it in an angle. But I'm not perfect every time and none of this buckled. So that was nice. Now, as far as dry time goes, I would put this at moderate drying and it's definitely not fast and I wouldn't really say it's slow either. It's just a little bit slower than what I normally use, which is not a bad thing because that makes it pretty ideal for a lot of different types of nail art with dip liquids. Plus, it does give you plenty of time to clean up around those cuticles if you need it. All right, so typically once I finish my first layer, I like to go back immediately with the brush and dust off. And so these were kind of soft set by that point. So I did my one layer and on all three fingers and then went to brush off. And it's, it's firm enough that I can dust off, but it's not completely solidified yet, if that makes sense. So that's what I mean by medium drying time. It's still drying by the time I finish the first layer on these three nails, which again is not a bad thing. It's just an observation. All right, so I'm hoping you can see what I mean here by the fact that it's easy to control. You can see that where I put it on the nail is where it stays, and it's really not difficult to get it to stay where I want it to go, and I don't have any running into my cuticle area or sidewalls. So, you know, that part made me really, really like these. So I'm gonna speed through the rest of the second layer, but I did wanna point that out because I think that makes it just absolutely ideal for anybody of any skill level, because even a beginner can use these thin liquids without having to worry about them kind of running all over the place. And somebody that's more intermediate or advanced would love them just for the wide range of types of nail art that you could do with these because they are a little bit slower drying. All right, so everything looks nice and smooth and opaque after two layers, so I'm gonna leave it here and we're gonna go ahead and activate these. Oh yeah, I forgot to show you that I did the blue on the thumb also, but I just did it separately. All right, so yeah, it's a work week during the day hours. You can always tell because I've got matching hands. So yeah, that's why I'm going to work during the daytime hours, but at least I'll have fun nails on both hands. So like I said, everything looks gorgeous. We're ready to try out this activator. So just as with the base bond, I did notice that there was a low scent to the activator. It wasn't completely odor free, but the scent wasn't really anything offensive. So, you know, it was, it was fine. It was pretty standard. And I wanted to see how fast it would work because typically if with most activators I can activate and then by the time I'm done with the last nail, the first nail is already hardened. And that was the case with this one. So like I said, pretty standard. Alright, looking vibrant and beautiful, so we are ready for the glitter. So my initial plan here was to do two dips in the glitter, um, because that's what I did in my swatch stick and I thought it looked nice. But it turns out that once I got one good dip in there, it was pretty good, so I ended up just doing a little bit of hand placing and kind of fixing any areas that looked a little sparse. But you know, as far as this glitter goes, like, my little matchy-matchy heart is so happy because, I mean, the shades in this glitter are literally a perfect match to the solids. <laughs> you guys, it's the little things. I don't want to tell you, it's the little things. Don't let, don't, don't make me feel like I'm alone. Y'all tell me in the comments down below that you love that too. So at the time I picked up her dip liquids, I decided to go and grab her crystal glass, which is her clear dip powder, because despite having used her products for over a year and a half, I hadn't tried this one either. Somehow I managed to not try it, so I figured now was the perfect time to use this with her dip liquids. 
you guys know that I pretty much have one brand of dip powder that I use for pretty much every clear encapsulation. I sometimes use my outliers, but it's almost always the same one. So I kind of wondered if I was going to get much use out of this. And I'm going to tell you here in a little bit that I have very strong feelings about this clear dip powder. So just wait, I'm going to get to it. All right, so I'm doing what I normally do with my clear encapsulation, which I recently did a video on troubleshooting this. So if you have not seen that one, I will have a link for in the cards, but I just kind of talk about how to apply a clear dip powder so that it's not cloudy. So I'm using those same techniques that I normally do, and I'm being very careful because I only have one set of liquids, so I'm trying not to get glitter contaminated on this brush. And on that note, instead of dipping, I'm going to pour over because I don't want to contaminate this jar because if I like it, I want to be able to use it again with solids. So I'm just going to pour over this instead of dipping. Wow, YouTuber fail, by the way. I was completely out of frame for that. Sorry. But yeah, I just poured it over into the liner and then did my normal cleanup. And it took a little bit longer for the dip liquid to absorb the clearest. So I was a little nervous there, like, uh-oh. Did, was my ratio not good because again like I talked about in that video it's really important that it start to get that wet look right after you do it and it just took a little bit longer so I thought oh I don't know about this one but the texture of it was super super fine so I thought well I'm just gonna hold off and just you know reserve my judgment till I finish these up all right, so because of the moderate drying time, I did have to wait a little bit longer than usual to brush off with a stiff brush. No big deal, just something worth noting. Um, again, that's just due to the fact that it is a bit of a slower drying liquid. Not slow, but not fast, like I usually use. So I went ahead and activated, and then I did my baggy trick like I normally do, and the activator worked pretty quickly, so I didn't have to wait too long to do that. And really, this didn't really need to press down with the baggy, but I just figured, you know, since I was already here and we were doing the thing with the activator, I figured I'd see how well that went. But yeah, this glitter actually lays very, very flat. And yeah, I know I only use one layer, but typically with these like more matte glitters, they don't really like flatten out and conform to the nail very much. But man, these did. They were super easy to use. And then that gold flake just kind of melts. So it was beautiful. All right, so now's about the time that I'm looking at everything done and I'm like, wait a minute, this clear looks like I didn't even put anything over top of this glitter. But I didn't have it top coated yet. So I was like, well, let me wait. Let me not get too excited yet, but so far so good. So I went ahead and uh, jumped off camera and did my filing and buffing and let me jump right back in with the finished nails ready for the top coat. All right, so everything filed and buffed beautifully. So we were ready to go in with the dip top coat. Now you guys know I have a special place in my heart for gel, but because I wanted to test the liquids out fully, I did use the dip top coat. So I'm just following the instructions that she provided, which stated go ahead and reactivate and wait two minutes. And then here is something that I saw in the instructions that I've never seen before. What it actually says is after the two minutes to take not just a lint free wipe, but a lint free wipe with alcohol and wipe the excess off the nail. So I'd never seen one that said actually have alcohol on the wipe. Usually it's just take a dry lint free wipe and do that, and just get the excess off. So I thought that was pretty interesting and I almost thought, well, I don't usually do that. I don't, I don't really know if I should, but I'm like, well, the instructions say to do it, so I'm gonna do it. So I did and uh, spoiler alert here, it didn't cause me any problems. It's just interesting. I had never seen instructions that said to use an alcohol infused wipe before. All right, so following the instructions here, it's your pretty standard uh, dip top coat instructions. You're supposed to do two to three quick swipes on the first uh, layer. I kind of failed here a little bit on the first nail. I didn't pick up enough liquid with the brush. So that was my bad. So I went over it a few more times than you probably should, but I, I got a little better as we went on. But yeah, you can see between um, applications and dipping back into the bottle, I do wipe it on this lint-free wipe. I just do that for the first layer. It's a habit I got into just in case there's any excess activator on there. It doesn't contaminate the brush, but probably didn't need to do that since we already wiped it down with an alcohol wipe, but I did it anyway just out of habit. So what it says on the instructions is that as soon as you finish the first layer, you can immediately go into the second layer. So again, that's what I did and I did not have any issues at all. So the instructions say that after your second layer, it can take up to three minutes for the top coat to completely dry. For me, it was dry in two minutes. Um, it did not take three minutes. I just kind of lightly touched on the side to make sure. But yeah, that's going to vary a little bit on your body warmth, your the warmth of your environment and humidity and all that, that fun stuff. But, but yeah, for me, it took about two minutes for it to completely finish drying. 
One thing I did want to mention is that, again, this is more of a low odor. It's not odorless, but it is low odor. But having said that, I did get a little close to it just to, to look at it, just to make sure I wasn't causing streaks on the nails. Which it didn't, by the way. It's very good at self-leveling. But um, I got a little close to it, and it kind of made my eyes burn a little bit with the top coat. The base coat and the activator didn't do that, but, but for some reason I got a little too close, I think, with the top coat. But... Again, that's not a critique, that's actually pretty typical, but if you're a dip flu sufferer, it's something to be aware of. Um, if you do experience dip flu, then I would say just wear a respirator mask. I will have the one that I have used time to time in the um, description box down below. But I find that, you know, with most things, I can just usually get around it with, you know, not getting too close to it and um, just keeping a well-ventilated area. But, you know, the respirator helps if you've got some particularly strong liquids. So I was curious to see if I was going to have really bad dip flu symptoms the next day, and I did not. I, not at all. So it, it just stung my eyes there for a second, but, you know, nothing lasting. All right, so here we are at the two layers, and you can see I have a very nice shine going on. Uh, this Again, these were great at self-leveling. I had no trouble at all. There was no streaking, no anything. Really look beautiful for, you know, dip top coat. And you're talking to somebody who loves gel, but I, I do think these look really quite beautiful. All right, so I'm finishing up here with my Scales of a Mermaid Limited Edition Cuticle Oil and Buzz Off, which is still available. And I do still have my discount code available for you until April 22nd, and that is Carry 10 so I'll have that a reminder for you down below. But oh, I can't say enough good things about this company. I just love everything. And this is such a gorgeous, fruity floral. Oh, I love it. And it's limited edition, at least for now, so make sure you grab it before they take it away. Okay guys, so let me get into my final thoughts. So first of all, let's talk about the powders. The collection is gorgeous. The powders are amazing. Nobody is surprised by that, right? <laughs> Nobody is surprised by me saying how much I love another one of Logan's collections, right? I just, I'm convinced that she does not make a bad powder. And on top of that, so much of what she comes up with is just super unique, like this glitter bodacious. I just think it is beautiful and such a unique combination. And she always manages to come up with powders that I just cannot find anywhere else. Now I gotta tell you, I was blown away by this clear dip powder called Crystal Glass. I'm definitely going back for a bigger jar. And I know what I said in my clear video about clears being, you know, pretty much created equal. And I stand by that statement because for the most part, they're all pretty standard. But there is something truly spectacular about this one. And I would guess it's probably the super fine texture of it because it just gave my glitter nail there such a clarity that I have not seen. So I think it's going to end up dethroning my, my ride or die. And I think this is going to be my new holy grail clear dip powder. As far as the liquids go, I absolutely loved them. I really enjoyed working with them, especially the base coat because I love that it's super easy to control and I didn't have any of the liquid slopping over into my cuticle area or my side walls. It was just effortless. And like I said, I think it's medium drying consistency it makes it great for people of all skill levels because beginners will love it because it gives them plenty of time to get it right. And experienced folks will love it because it's perfect for nail art or even just everyday use. I mean, I definitely will continue using these. You know, the activator is pretty standard. It did what it was supposed to do. It activated, so that's good. And then the top coat has a really nice shine. So if you're somebody who really loves dip top coat, I think you would really enjoy this one. And apart from being high shine, it was really great at self-leveling. I had no difficulties using it whatsoever. So bottom line, guys, these liquids are fantastic. I shouldn't be surprised. Like I said, I feel like I love everything that she creates. And of course, I feel like somebody as meticulous as her with her products would definitely not sell bad liquids, right? So they did not disappoint at all. And these will definitely be in my rotation. All right, guys, so that's going to complete this video. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you did find it helpful. If you did, it would help me out so much if you would give me a thumbs up down below. And while you're there, if you have not subscribed already, I hope you'll consider subscribing before you go. And don't forget that notification bell. We got new content coming every Tuesday and Friday at 2 p.m. Central. As always, thank you guys so much for being here. I really appreciate it. And I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.